The Sheriff's Report is a joint production of Spokane Talks Media and KTW 6.30 a.m. and 96.5 f.m., which are solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, or watch this program again anytime at SpokaneTalksMedia.com. Have a safe day. Well, good morning or afternoon, depending on when you're listening to this. This is Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich with the Sheriff's Report. This is going to be the third and final segment of our series titled For the Soul of America, a look at the white supremacist and white nationalist movement in the Spokane region. For those of you that uh, haven't seen the, the first two parts of this uh, program, in station with me today is former state representative um, for the state of Washington, John Smith, and John grew up in this environment. John broke away from this environment. Uh, matter of fact, his first stand against it was when he, when he was 14, uh, when his uh, grandfather was talking to leaders of the white nationalist, white separatist movement uh, in their dining room. And from that point on, it, it's been a journey um, to not just escape this type of lifestyle. John, you, you've kind of taken it on as a mission to make sure that people explain, understand in no uncertain terms the evil that is slowly and cryptically creeping into both sides of the political uh, spectrum. In section two, folks, we covered how the same ideology actually seeped into the left side in the Spokane area. Um, so we have a, a very covert group. They changed their tactics. Um, this uh, leadership of the group here regionally uh, it comes from uh, a place, a, a refuge, if, we, if you will, a uh, marble country. Um, the one thing you, that we've talked about is, is the birds. John, one of the things that I, when I read and I read uh, a lot about Marble. They seem to take extreme effort, never to mention Christian identity, never to mention the Ark, never to mention certain key aspects of this, but their philosophies mirror. Is that by choice or is that by design? So. Um, it's by design, um, and the the reason for that is when they, shortly after I rejected their invitation to be a part of their community, uh, they realized that that their talking points weren't playing really well uh, with a lot of the people in the area that lean toward white supremacy, and so they kind of took a step back into Pete Peter's idea of reaching out to the children of the world. And so they started, you know, by nature, white supremacy is a predatory movement, and it's about controlling people. And so they started finding people who were broken, who were wounded, who were, you know, who were dissatisfied, similar to the story that I told about my grandfather. And they started giving them a place of belonging, a place where they could be safe. And they started telling this story about how someday everything was going to all fall apart, but because they were in this community, they'd be safe and then they could build the kingdom of God from there, that they could take over the, the county government, that they could implement what they called righteousness. And, uh, but a part of that story also is if you rejected what they had to say, you became labeled as an agent of Satan, literally. Now, what does that mean? So that's a good question. So in the former segment, I talked about their hierarchy, where the, you know, there was God, and then right beneath God were God's people, which are white people, and then beneath that are all of the brown-skinned races, and then at the very bottom are what they say, or said, were the literal descendants of Satan, uh, the Jewish people. Well, if you're an agent of Satan, even if you're a white person, what that means is you've gone out of that top spart, that top... Uh, children of God category, and now you've gone all the way down below the Jewish part, 
and now you're a, a direct representative of Satan. And so in, in their philosophy, that makes you, um, you're uh, liable for the death penalty. So it's a, it's a death sentence. It's a death sentence. Um, would you like to tell folks uh, who's wearing that label right now? <laughs> well, after a couple of years ago, I, uh, I had a conversation with uh, one of the reporters for The Inlander, and he quoted me extensively uh, in, in one of his articles. Shortly afterward, I met Ann Bird in Walmart, and she explained to me that I was in league with Satan and that I was a minister of Satan because I dared to speak to the press and I dared to misrepresent what, what Marble was all about. And I said, you know, all I'm doing is telling what I saw. And uh, she, was, she was pretty uh, furious. So yourself, myself, uh, you know, reporters who have, have uh, been critical, but it's, it's not just that. I mean, we're obviously, I obviously have a bullseye, you obviously have a bullseye. But ultimately, even people in their own community that have said that they couldn't buy into their totalitarian way of leading things, even they're listed as lost now. Even they're listed as being set off to Satan because they won't accept the unfettered control and interference of the birds in every minute aspect of their life. And folks, if you think that uh, hyperbole, let me read you something that was sent to me. I'm not going to use the individual's name. I forwarded this information to the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force, the FBI. But this individual attended a meeting for the 51st state here very recently um, and asked questions. And this guy, person, um, says that, you know, I'm not opposed to the idea. You know, I, how about a first... 53rd, 2nd, 5th, whatever, uh, as many it takes to get liberty back in hand. Um, but I do have some questions. Because he asked those questions, and these are his words, um, he says that, as such, I now consider Mr. Bosworth and that's another name that is associated with this, this group. Uh, you may recognize that name from um, some local history here. A direct threat to myself and my family, and I will respond accordingly. I actually tried to disengage Mr. Bosworth several times. He didn't let up. Finally, I got fed up and responded in kind. Then your moderators and Matt Shea himself announced that they had done an investigation and found that I was part of an orchestrated attempt and a provocateur. They label, label people provocateurs re really quick. If, if you disagree with them, folks, you get labeled immediately. Got labeled a pro provocateur. Neither of these are true, and they were lies. I do not tolerate lies or liars. So if you're thinking what John just told you about all of that was hyperbole, these people are, are fearful now. And she, this is not the only person that, that reached out. Again, all that information uh, has been sent to the proper channels and, uh, you know, it's chilling. It's chilling to think that it, if you merely disagree, you're now labeled, and if you speak out against, you face a death penalty. Sound like a state of liberty to you? Really? Is this your concept of liberty? Not mine. So, You've, you've mentioned that there are plans to take over local governments. I've seen this play out. Richard Mack and, and affiliated with these groups and a few others wanted to take over a county in Arizona and he was going to be the sheriff. And just so you know, folks, Cecily Wright and Matt Shea and Caleb Collier and a bunch of others got together for the last year and a half Cecily told me this herself, 
and they tried to convince Richard Mack to move up to Spokane County. Uh, they were going to pay his way, pay for him to be here, to run against me this, this election. They couldn't get any of that done. They found somebody to run against me, um, somebody that's in their group. Uh, I will not say what this man changed his name to. You all saw it on the ballot. And about a year, or a year, it seems like a year, for two years I, I've, I've lived under a, uh, a threat, a direct threat. The FBI has looked into that. That threat continues to keep an eye on, on the threat. But two weeks ago, my opponent on his blogging and John noticed it himself, started using the words Satan. I, I'm the great Satan. I need to be eliminated. Actually had a picture of David holding uh, Goliath's head. Uh, so it's, it's interesting to watch all the linkages forming together. It's interesting to w watch and see how their attempt to take over local government is going. But the thing that I have great hope in is people. Folks, I have great hope in you to open your eyes, see what's going on, and, and stop this. You mentioned Charlottesville because you have a great passion to speak against this, but you also have a great passion to save those that are trapped in this horrible ideology. Speak a little bit about that, John. So, you know, you asked about my path. Um, so once I started recognizing how dangerous my grandfather's beliefs were and got apart from it, uh, then once I got here to Northeast Washington and found out that there was a lot of it here too, I basically, I started praying and I said, you know, what do I do now? Where do I go to get, get away from this? And at the time I was reading a George MacDonald book. I don't know if you know who he is. He was a writer back in the 1800s, uh, wrote, um, you know, basically parabolic Christian based stories. And he, he told a story there about someone coming to him and saying, how do I serve the Lord? Where do I go? What do I do? And his response was, well, you start with what's right next to you. You start right now with the person who's beside you. You start right now in the situation you're in. And so I looked around me and I decided instead of running from this situation, that what I needed to do was stand and face it. And a part of standing and facing it meant confronting people who hold these violent and racist beliefs. A part of that meant for looking, looking for people like my grandfather. I, I told the story in one of the earlier segments about how he was just a typical Lutheran uh, who ran into a, a bad stretch of life and white supremacists literally sought him out like a predator and recruited him and radicalized him. Well, what if, Ozzy, what if when my grandfather was being approached by these guys, what if he was being, while he was being inculcated in anti-Semitism, what if somebody at that point would have reached out to him in real love with the real gospel of Jesus, not this nonsense that these guys are touting? What if somebody really would have connected to him then? Maybe he could have not gone down that road. And so one thing that I've tried to do since is to recognize where there are people that, you know, at Charlottesville, you know, the president was quoted as saying, well, there's some good people in that crowd. Well, I'm going to say that you're not going to march in a KKK march if you're a good person, because that's not what a good person does. But what I do believe is there were people in that crowd that were broken, that were wounded, that were hurting, and that were afraid. And the only source, the only place of safety that they found was to express their rage in a very destructive way. Well, what I've tried to do is I've tried to find those broken and hurting people and give them a better idea, a better hope, a better direction. Haven't always been successful, but it doesn't mean I stopped trying because I believe what Martin Luther King taught that hate can't cast out hate, only love can do that. And so that, we don't overcome white supremacy by transferring the hate that they spew out back onto them. We overcome white supremacy by living a better way, by communicating with people, by demonstrating empathy to the people that are around us, both white-skinned and dark-skinned, recognizing that it's the content of our character that we're judged on, not by the color of our skin. And that's the way it, it should be. That's the whole idea behind the true nature of, of America, equality and everything else. And you know, people always, but America started out a certain way. Yeah, we did. 
folks, there was major arguments on this these topics from the very beginning. There were those who wanted to do away with slavery at the beginning of this country. They realized in order to form this country they, that certain things, compromises were made. Um, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, it led to a civil war. These people want to see another civil war. If you take a look at uh, the Maurer takeover, that was supposed to be the Alamo. That was supposed to be what kicked this off. I remember reading uh, online um, from the uh, one of the the alt right type groups that we may not agree with what's going on here. Matter of fact, this is a bad bad situation. But this may be the hand we have to play out. This may be what starts that civil war. You hear the Civil War concept building. I can't tell you how many times a week that when I'm talking to people, somebody will say, Sheriff, do you think the Civil War is coming? Do you, how do you, you, the nation is now starting to sense this great divide. <laughs> and these, these folks are sitting back laughing because they, they, they view it as their, their end game is starting to maybe start hitting that that phase right and I, I do I fear for our, for our nation I fear for our nation because we keep allowing this hate this radicalized hate to influence our decisions folks it's time to drop the hate I'm proud to be supported by people on the right the left the center that have widely different views of, of different things. I'm blessed in that way, and I'm proud to call each and every one of you my friend and countryman. It's time that we get back to that philosophy, that we are friends, we are countrymen. We, we just see things a little bit differently, and we can overcome this, but you're not going to overcome this with hate, as you said, Hate is not going to stop hate. We need to reach out and try to save as many people from this movement as we can. We need to identify what's truly going on in, uh, in our nation. You know, I mentioned a, a name, Mr. Bosworth. I, it, recently, I, I was sent a, a Facebook post where, uh, because of my stand last week on, um, you know, Mr. Alsup speaking and the splash that it caused, uh, that uh, he's, he's more than happy to uh, be my huckleberry. If you haven't seen Tombstone, Kurt Russell, watch it. It's You'll understand what that means. And I just shake my head and go, really? Uh, it, it's really come down to this. Now, this show is probably going to rattle some cages. Um, uh, your opponent from the last time, I like the guy. I do. Uh, I, I consider him a friend. I, he's probably not going to like uh, how you know this particular segment. Um, and, and we're not saying that it was him that done this. It no. wasn't he. He didn't do this. He did not use this. There were people in the back row that started throwing this mud. And I will tell you, your former opponent had nothing to do with it. He's a good, honorable man. I know the man. I, I've talked with him. He does not agree with these people. He does not agree with the leadership, the political leadership that controls this, this, this region um, from that side. He doesn't. He's a good man. I, I, I think the world of him. So, you know, just kind of calm down. Not about you. It's not about me. It's not about John. It's not about Matt. Not about Anthony. It's about what is happening to our country, folks. It's time to step back and not, not take offense because what we are talking about is a danger. This is real. Charlottesville, Portland, 
you have the extremes on both sides trying to pull us apart as a nation. It's time for middle America to stand up and go, we're done. That's not going to happen. We are done. Uh, you can dislike somebody that's in office. Guess what? That's what this thing called a vote is. You take this thing, uh, they send you the, the ballot, uh, you fill it in. It changes the dynamic. Or it doesn't change the dynamic. And if it doesn't go your way, that is our system. That is how we are formed. We all get a chance. And quite frankly, it flips and flops. Where would you like to go next? What, what do you think is the next major important thing to cover on this? Because we've co covered the Civil War. Right. They're, they're looking. They want that to happen. And, you know, uh, down in Nevada, the Bundy standoff was supposed to be, as you stated, Lexington and Concord. Uh, all the same players, folks. All of the same players. The Bundys, Shea, Bosworth, all those people are all attached to that, to Oregon, to take over there, to North. We have five minutes. In five minutes, what do you think is the most important aspects that we haven't covered? Well, I think the most important is what do we do with this? And like I said, you know, just transferring hate from one group to another, that doesn't fix it. And so first you have to recognize there's a problem, though. And there is a problem. This is a problem. It produces violence, whether it's on the right or the left. And, you know, from my perspective, my worldview, I view the Hammonds as victims. I view them as victims of the federal government, and then I view them as victims from these radical crazies on the right. In both cases, these are poor farmers that just wanted to live their lives, and they've been drawn into something that I don't think they ever would have been a part of. And so I think what we see right now, you know, I have to laugh when I hear the conversations about, about liberty. So my predecessor in the Senate, Senator Morton, had sponsored multiple ways that Eastern Washington could become its own state. And none of those ways, none of those elements contained any of this Civil War nonsense. It was all about following the law and finding a way that we could get better representation instead of worse. Well, the way that I look at liberty is liberty isn't demonstrated by how many times you say liberty in a public speech. Liberty is demonstrated by how you treat people you disagree with. And if you believe that you need to form a government, a state, a county, where you exclude everybody who disagrees with you and only allow people who agree with you, that's not liberty. That's called totalitarianism. I believe liberty is e pluribus unum. That is where we come together, all of us different, and somehow we find a measure of harmony in, in agreeing on common principles. And so I, I'm, I'm not opposed to the, like the gentleman you read from, I'm not opposed to a, a new state, I'm not opposed to the idea of change. But what I am opposed to is violence. And I am opposed to this idea that anybody who disagrees with the person at the microphone, that they're wrong. I'm here because I believe in freedom of speech. I've heard people say things that are wrong that don't represent me, and I appreciate, Ozzy, you giving me the chance to say what I do think. And folks, this, this whole idea of a 51st state, uh, again, that's not new, but you actually have that on the ballot in California, to break California into three different states. What are we doing? Our, I mean, that's sort of like the ultimate take your ball and go home. You didn't get your way, so we're going to take our side of the state and leave. I get it. I get frustrated just like all of you. I do. Uh, I don't want to become Seattle. Seattle has lost its mind. Um, I, it really has. Portland has lost its mind. We, we can do better, folks, but we only do better for working together. That means the left and the right working together, not yelling at each other, not pointing fingers, not trying to make each other look like the demon of the world. Um, because if you don't you're going to allow this ideology to slip into both sides. And we aligned out just how it happens. You know, the Aryan nations believe that all those opposed to Israel are the good guys. That means the terrorists, the whole gambit. We've seen it happen. We've seen it seep in uh, to the local region on the left. We're seeing it trying to sleep into the local region on, on the right. We need to do better. We need to call out those who are this agent uh, of hate and say no more. 
this show isn't uh, it wasn't designed to be offensive folks this show was designed to be informative I'm so tired of watching my nation pull itself apart I believe in us and I believe in uh, the concepts that this nation was founded on and I know that we can do better and we need to do better because there's a generation of young people and a generation of little people that are looking at us and going, this is how they act? You wonder where they learn to be bullies? Look in the mirror. We have a heart problem in the United States. That heart problem is we have forgotten who we are and the values that made us great. And I can tell you, hate was never one of those values that made us great. It was our ever arching and overarching drive to overcome hate from the inception of the nation through the Civil War, through the Civil Rights Movement to today has been one giant fight to overcome hate. And maybe someday we'll get there, but we will never get there if we continue to teach our children hate, if we continue to show them that that is how we treat anybody that disagrees with us. This is a fight for the heart of a nation. It's the fight for the heart of those children. Wake up. We can do better. This is Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich with the Sheriff's Report. Have a great day. The Sheriff's Report is a joint production of Spokane Talks Media and KTW, 6.30 a.m., and 96.5 FM, which are solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, or watch this program again anytime at SpokaneTalksMedia.com. Have a safe day.